Welcome to the second episode of series 48. Ryan wrote, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I get to say whatever I want. This was free. It was carte blanche to say anything I want here. Uh-huh. So, no, I'm just kidding. Um, no, I'm really excited for this episode. I loved mm. character creation in this one. Yeah, um, we dive into the relationships this episode. Yeah, yeah, it's we got very serious. It's very serious. So serious. So serious. Um, <laughs> no, I had a lot of fun defining those relationships. So I hope everybody listening enjoys it. And I mm-hmm. hope that they enjoy the fact that I was trying really hard to like not be myself. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, still a little bit. But, you I know. like a little bit, but not, you know, <laughs> I did not do blood. I mean, I had to do magic because there was because the Cause setting, it's, it's, you know, it's a magic. It's but a magic I didn't school. do blood. So yet. Yet. We'll see. It's true. We'll see. It's true. We'll find out. <laughs> well, uh, before we get going into the episode, we do have some announcements. Uh, first up, there are two bundles that you should be checking out on itch.io. First is the TTRPG bundle for Trans Rights Texas. There are almost 500 items included in this bundle, including my very own game, Our Final Gathering, The Dreaded Reflections of the Immortal Soul. Uh, We cover that game on a Patreon exclusive episode if you want to hear what it's about. Uh, But this bundle is only $5 minimum, uh, which is an amazing deal. Yeah. Absolutely. This bundle is meant to provide funds to trans advocacy groups in Texas in light of recent policies enacted by the governor, which, among other things, seeks to prosecute parents who provide gender affirming health care to their kids as child abusers. Which is like the worst. That's just like, it's the opposite. Like I've yeah. been listening to so many interviews with psychologists and stuff that are like, n- no, actually doing that is like, like withholding mm-hmm. gender affirming care from your kid is like awful. Yeah. Well, especially if they're in the middle of it already. Right. It right. is ridiculous. I mean, and there's so much more like happening with this policy about like them not having to document that they're doing these investigations. Like it's mm-hmm. just it's it's a nightmare. It's a yeah. nightmare. It's total garbage. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, it's it's very dangerous, uh, both directly to the families affected, but also indirectly uh, in the precedent that it sets. Uh, there's going to be a lot of states that might model after this. Mm-hmm. Um, so so this will really help. Uh, advocates work with the families directly impacted uh, and to fight against these dangerous and, and frankly discriminatory policies. Yeah. The other bundle that we would love for you to take a look at is the bundle for Ukraine, which has a minimum price of $10, but contains almost a thousand items. I believe it was 998 earlier mm-hmm. when I looked. Yeah, I think 300 of them are RPGs and about 600 and some odd um, are like... Uh, games that you can play on the computer and, and a bunch of mm-hmm. other things. Yeah, I mean, I know a lot of these bundles, I, I put items instead of games because I know some of them are like additional playbooks for games and, yep. you know, um, adventures and things like that. I did see that Thirsty Sword Lesbians was in this one. So oh, yeah. if you loved those episodes and haven't gotten that game yet, now is your chance to do it for a good cause. Mm-hmm. This one funds two different charities, the International Medical Corps, which provides medical assistance in that region. Um, And then Voices of Children, which is a Ukrainian organization that helps children cope with the trauma of war. So Mm -hmm. PTSD and um, just like the displacement and all of that kind of stuff that they have happening. Mm -hmm. Um, Russia invaded Ukraine on the pretense that it should still be part of the Soviet Union Mm -hmm. um, because we're just pretending it's the 80s still over there. I, I... I told Ryan, I won't talk too much about Eastern European (laughs) politics right now. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, More pressing is the fact that Russia has shown this ever increasing disregard for human rights as they do this. Um, A lot of their attacks have been focused on heavily populated areas. They've targeted things like hospitals, which Mm -hmm. is against international law. Um, Buying games might seem like a really small action for both of these things. It might seem like, okay, I'm just like, you want me to buy an RPG to stop war and horrible discrimination? Yes, we do. One of the things that organizations like this need most is money. Mm -hmm. Um, 
you know, like they're obviously very happy to have volunteers and things like that, but it costs money to run these kinds of programs to give people the support that they need to fight all of these battles. Like I remember, um, like even from my divorce, I think it costs like $400 just to file the paperwork. Mm. It's like things cost money. Um, especially, you know, like lengthy legal battles and, you know, getting people supplies and things like yeah. that. Um, so we really urge you to take a look at both of these bundles and to give whatever you can. If you're able to give over the minimum, that's awesome. If you can mm -hmm. only give the minimum, every bit helps. And you do get like just a ton of games. Yeah. Um, and both of these are causes that are absolutely worth supporting. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and while we encourage you to give to the causes uh, we just talked to you about, uh, if you have something left over, uh, we also have a network Patreon that helps our show and all the other shows on the network at patreon.com slash one shot podcast. Um, there you can get bonus episodes for various shows uh, on the network and even other rewards like a free RPG every month. Do you think that we've like suggested that these people like RPGs? Probably. Like here's a bundle with 500. Here's a bundle with a thousand. Do you want to join a Patreon and possibly get another free one every month? <laughs> Y'all like I, games? <laughs> I would hope so. Uh, I mean, I would guess there's maybe a couple people that, that are here just for us, but... Yeah, yeah. I just don't want to alienate our non-gaming audience members. I know, you know? Okay. correct. Uh, well, actually, you know what? This maybe will help. I really want to make playlists for each of our series. Mm. I recently posted on Twitter and Instagram about the one that I made for our A Christmas Belonging series. Um, I made it based off of songs I think that would be in a Hallmark movie about time traveling people and bees. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> I know it's late for Christmas. It is still winter-ish here in Wisconsin. It was 30 mm -hmm. degrees this morning. It's not anymore, but that's fine. Um, there are not any actual Christmas songs on there, though, so you can listen to it year round. Oh, there you go. We did recently ask on Twitter, but we would love to hear from any of you anywhere. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, apparently on TikTok, email. Mm -hmm. Also, we have Pinterest. You probably can't leave comments there. But if you want to see some mood boards that I made for some of our characters, you can also find us on Pinterest. Mm -hmm. um, but we'd love to hear about what series you would like us to work on next um if there are any specific themes or songs that you think we absolutely need to include mm -hmm. please tell us um it's going to be a slow process to make because I'm, I'm very particular um mm -hmm. but i think it would be fun they are fantastic it's something i've wanted to do since our uh Star our starcrossed ones oh, so yeah. you know and if you haven't heard those ones uh absolutely check those out because yes. they are still amazing yes oh they're still so good <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of, we do have a TikTok page now. Uh, we're basically hosting all of our teasers for the upcoming episodes there. Um, we're not sure if we're going to use it for anything else. We don't really know if we will. Uh, if if you have suggestions, we're, we're always taking suggestions. We're not going to probably do everything that you suggest for us to do. Um, or maybe even anything. <laughs> you can suggest we things. We probably won't do it, but you're welcome to suggest <laughs> I'm it. just saying <laughs> it, no, it, it, it's very dependent on what we get for suggestions. That's true. Um, but, you know, it doesn't hurt to suggest. Uh, we're not going to get your suggestion and say, mm, I don't think I like this person anymore. Yeah, we won't uh, we won't insult you to your face. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I would never even be behind your back. No, you wouldn't. Ryan wouldn't. <laughs> Ryan would never insult you. <laughs> well, leave it at um, that. No, I would love to find some stuff to do. I would love to like, I don't know, like pretend to be our characters or something. But I don't know something. what yet or how. Yeah, we'll yeah. figure something, something out. Something with characters, though. It would, you know? yeah, it would make sense. Something character focused. Character character uh, creation focused maybe or something. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's almost like it's our thing. Mm. Uh, but but if you want, you can follow us at Character Creation Cast on TikTok and yeah. like our stuff. Yeah. That is it for announcements. If that was not enough for you, stick around after the show. When we'll do more announcements or just repeat the ones that we said already. Uh -huh. um, but we do have a review to read. So that's exciting. Uh, so stick around for that. In the meantime, please enjoy this very serious episode. <laughs> so serious. So serious.
Last time on Character Creation Cast, we created a magic school called Poof with headmistress Meredith Bleep Blorp, trying to keep things running while the school is in a zoning litigation with the local merfolk. Amelia started making a best friend. John started making a funny klutz. Doug started making a haughty descendant. And I started making a haunted survivor. We're picking up right where we left off last time. Enjoy. All right. So I've got my uh, my trope. Um, this is the first exposure I've had to any of the kids on games. Um, so what is my next step um, after selecting a trope? Um, so then you select their grade. So I think we're agreeing this is high school, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if we're going upper class, that'd be juniors or seniors. Um, then the like strengths. Juniors, probably. Yeah. I like having a grade above us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then there are on the tropes list uh, some suggested strengths and suggested flaws. So you pick two of each. Okay. Oh, interesting. Are these um, are these just narrative descriptions um, or do these have mechanical uh, benefits as well? The strengths have mechanical benefits. The flaws are, um, had we, do we make them mechanical in here? Mm, no, I don't think so. I think they are role playing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but I'm okay. watching real quick. Oh, I just really don't know how I'm going to play this character, Ryan. <laughs> well, you don't have to worry about it. I know, but even like making it, I'm just like not. Yeah. Flaws are not mechanical. Make, make, okay. Make them the, the most, uh, necromantic uh reliable bestie yeah. um and i'm trying to make mine the most magical girl haunted survivor okay so you, you can still be a, a a little spooky uh yeah. and still be reliable well one of the one of the flaws listed on here is cursed so oh i mean that happens that's you know we could be cursed together yeah timid and cursed i think i'll i'll take those as my uh my flaws all right and Likely strengths. Guardian seems like a good one. Between resilient and psychic link, um, where do I find the descriptions of what the strengths uh, are all about? Appendix C talks about on page 90. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Found it. Oh, having a familiar sounds amazing. Oh, yeah. Everybody gets one of those. Oh, thank you. Yeah, everybody gets all the fun stuff, a broom, a wand, and a familiar. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's amazing. Can it be anything? Okay, so I've got Guardian and Psychic Link, uh, which gives me a uh, two-way communication uh, with my uh, familiar at any distance. Oh, nice. What is my magical girl uh, familiar going to be? Look at all this cool stuff. Okay, and I see on the um, tropes pages... They have a uh, the stats, the base stats, the dice that you get in mm -hmm. all of them. Is that just you just fill those out as given? Yes. If there's anything you really, really want to swap around, you can. But the tropes sort of pre-generate that for you. Awesome. So it looks like my, my D20 is in fight, which is perfect. Cool. Uh, D4 and charm. Uh, not the most magical girl, but I can work with that. <laughs> That's fine. I am haunted. Uh, so that would make sense. Is it like an active so there, haunting where like you're constantly being like onslaughted by poltergeist? You know, it's very possible. Uh, maybe it's, maybe it's haunted by stuff that only I can see and, and interact with. Oh, I like it. So like, you know, I might be in this absolutely epic confrontation with something, but it just looks like I'm jumping around. Oh, that's great. There's a fantastic um, BBC show called Ghosts that that's kind of the plot is that the main character can see all the ghosts that live in the house, but nobody else can. Oh, and the ghosts are all horrible and dumb. Yeah. Oh, speaking of BBC shows, and this is totally off topic. John, uh, we watched the first two episodes of Murder and Successful. Yeah. The first one didn't quite do it for me. I was dying during the second one. Yep. Yeah. The first like, one's slow. Cry laughing. Mm hmm. It's so good. Yeah, it's really good. All right, hey. let's stay focused at the table. Come on, everybody. Serious game. <laughs> Serious. Someone game. who's haunted in fights with their demons. 
Yeah. I, I like to think from my character's perspective, like stuff is getting destroyed and like, you know, major collateral damage. But when the dust settles, like everything's normal, mm-hmm. like nothing's gotten <laughs> hurt during the whole battle. <laughs> uh, so, so great. I kind of went a little bit off the trope on mine. Uh, I took funny clutz, but I took lucky as a strength. Okay. And uh, my concept is that um, my character is cursed with it, with its streams of luck, no middle ground. <laughs> oh i could definitely play with that that's great all right Everyone. so once we get the strengths and flaws um our stats there uh what's the next part that we need to uh, work on everyone should have a familiar as well and set your first name all right i also set my last name is that a problem no yeah you had your name john before we even started it's a real good name <laughs> i can't wait uh what is my animal family going to be? Uh, so are you are you going with sloth, John? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's he's not a smart sloth. <laughs> I have Pitch, uh, a judgmental raven. Oh, nice. Uh, and my character's name is Garrison, but he goes by Gar. He's a haughty descendant who is wealthy and lucky, uh, and he is haughty and tempted. Mine is uh, Jimmy Tinglebottom. And mm-hmm. I <laughs> funny thoughts in my sloth's name is Frodo. And I'm uh, my flaws are clumsy and reckless. All right. I still need a name for my character. Um what can I go with there? Are you my twin? Are you the, the other fellow Tingle Bottom? I don't think so. <laughs> Thanks so. <laughs> Thanks for the Take offer. Still on the Thank table for though. the offer. <laughs> no and yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Step number one when we teach role players. No way. <laughs> yep. I need a name for my familiar. Uh, what is it? Oh, it's a flamingo. Oh, perfect. Pinky. Or any of the other Pac Man ghosts. <laughs> Blinky. Dinky. Clyde. Clyde. Yeah. All right. I am playing uh, or, or creating. Uh, Elvira Whispershanks, mm-hmm. uh, pronouns she, her, uh, age 17, haunted survivor trope, um, with a flying squirrel, uh, animal familiar named Chipper. It seems much more useful than a sloth. Yeah. <laughs> uh, timid and cursed are my flaws, uh, and guardian and psychic link are my strengths. Okay. Uh, I named my character Amy Catherine Boyd. She goes by Amy Catherine. It's it's hyphenated. You need K to or say C. what? K or C? C. Um, and you need to call her Amy Catherine. She does not go by Amy. Amy Catherine. There you go. Um, let's see. The strengths I took were loyal and guardian. Um, for flaws, I picked naive and cursed. Uh, and I have a flamingo familiar named Alistair. And what's your trope? Uh, my trope is the reliable bestie. And, and Doug, I missed your character's name. My character's name is Garrison, but he goes by Gar. Uh, he is a haughty descendant. He's, he's a real jerk. Uh, he's wealthy and lucky. He's haughty and tempted. He has a familiar who's a judgmental raven named Pitch. Uh, Gar is not immune from Pitch's judgment. Uh, Gar came to Poof, uh, like finally agreed to go to magical school. Um, because he thought there might be some attractive women there. Um, oh. mm-hmm. that's, that's his shtick. And he is, uh, somewhat charming. He's got a D12 in charm, but, uh, he's got a D20 in fight. So he is, uh, oh, gar. but a D4 he's like not rip. charming enough to make up for how big of a jerk he is. <laughs> Correct. Right. He's, <laughs> he's above average charming, but not charming enough. And, um, he has a D4 in grit, so he does not take rejection, uh, maturely. Mm. All right. So what is next? All right. So next, we, if everyone is going with uh, standard species and that, um, we have our overview of magic, um, just to get a sense of how this plays out in the game as you're crafting your character. Anytime you cast a spell, you're going to be able to use whatever stat you want for that magic. It's just going to determine the approach that you take to it. Um, so if you are using fight to cast magic, um, 
that's generally going to be when you're like attacking enemies or trying to break curses or blast obstacles. But you're going to sort of like be fighting with the rules of reality when you're using that or fighting against someone else. Flight is going to be sort of like dodging and trying to sort of uh, outmaneuver something. Brains is going to be using your uh, intelligence to sort of bend those rules or understand the rules carefully enough, fully enough that you can know how to work around them. Brawn is when you're just sort of like uh, physically you know, bringing your physical will into it and overpowering things. Charm is influencing other people's thinking or creating illusions or stuff like that. And then grit is toughing it out, either physically or mentally. Okay. So yeah. Uh, and then the next step is introductions and questions. So we've introduced our characters to each other. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to ask some relationship questions. Oh, excellent. Um, so who would like to... Uh, actually, so the first thing to decide is whether we want to do the very abbreviated, which we don't recommend, um, the mid-range or the super deluxe extended edition. Um, so on the mid-range everyone answers one question about each other player at the table mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and in the extended everybody answers two questions one positive and one negative about each other player at the table Ooh. yeah i mean i feel like we need to do the extended but there's only four of us so sure. it's not yeah. like it'll not you bad. know and and that assumes that we all know each other i think if we're all juniors at the school we've probably yeah. have been in school for a couple of years together yeah. um there are also questions for characters you don't know you know mm -hmm. and if we were to decide that like gar and amy catherine just sort of know of each other then we would answer just one neutral question about each other but if we say okay. we all you know we've all had classes together we have opinions about each other yeah. we'll do a positive and a negative question about each other very cool um and then i saw in the tropes mm -hmm. section uh each of the tropes had two questions as well yes mm -hmm. about themselves um do we answer that before we get into relationships up to you. If you want to share that information now, you can. Oh, okay. Or that can be something you decide after we've established relationships, sort of building off of that. Or it could even be something that you keep secret, but that you know the answer to. Okay. One of mine, yeah. though, my first question, what famous or infamous thing is your family known for in the magic world? Um, I think that would be something everybody would know about, about sure. Gar. So Gar's family is known for... I think our family is, uh, Gar's family are the three main litigators in the ongoing property dispute. Ooh, the fancy lawyer wizards? Mm -hmm. Big fancy lawyer wizards. <laughs> Ice. Do you go to a separate magical law school or is it just like regular law school? <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be a, little, a separate magical law school. There has to be. Yeah. Well, I would just think that like the Mer people have like a different judicial system, like a different sense mm -hmm. of... You know. Well, that's you that's where you would learn about the mer people's uh, right. judicial system and all that sort of well, stuff. And then, so like, are we court. fighting this in like mer people court, or do they have to fight it in our court, or you is it like a it like the... an agreed upon neutral ground? Is this like sort of like a yeah, it's jurisdiction? You know, I think. Yeah. Yeah, Gar is uh -huh. happy to talk about that at length. He gets a lot of things wrong, but he's mm -hmm. like absolutely <laughs> insistent that he is one hundred percent correct about it. Right. He's wrong, but he's confident. <laughs> wrong, but absolutely uh -huh. confident. That's one of the things he learned from uh, from his mom and his dad that, you know, yeah. it doesn't matter what you say as long as you say it, absolute confidence and a lot of money. Right. Fake it till you make it. Mm -hmm. Just act like you belong. I don't think I have any like big questions that would have been revealed to the other characters. Um, one of mine is what is the tragedy that haunts you? Um, and the other is what strength has that tragedy given you the most uh, or that most others lack? I guess that one would be um, like I have a, a grit determination to protect others at all costs. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask this, Ryan, because yeah. we both have that cursed flaw. And one of my questions was, why are you so bonded to your best friend? Yeah. Um, and so I, I was wondering if you wanted to be my best friend. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, oh. And then uh, because I wrote for my trope question, um, we've been through something traumatic together. Ooh, oh, that nice. Okay, so I was yeah. wondering if you would like us to be, you know, like you can have your, your ghost or whatever and like talk to ghosts. But I think yeah. that like 
whatever it was, we both somehow ended up cursed. And if that's cool with you. Yeah, no, that sounds great. Awesome. That was my only one that I really needed to like. Um, oh, when when do you wish you were the center of attention rather than the sidekick? And I said, I think I could break this curse if they would just let me. Mm. Mm. Nice. Um, so I guess your character would have known my tragedy then. Yes. Uh, that uh, the, the tragedy that haunts me is I lost my uh, magical girl team to a tragedy years ago. Mm -hmm. um, lost as in they literally disappeared uh -huh. and I could not find them. So I have no idea what their fate is. Okay. And that's, is that what your curse stems oh, no, from? I think or that's just like your curse. haunted thing? Yeah, oh, because, because of, of my curse. curse. Okay. Like, like they mm -hmm. got disappeared somehow and mm. now I can't find them. And so now I want to go to magical school mm -hmm. to up my magical knowledge, uh, and really step things up to the next level to hopefully find them. Right. Maybe even bring them back, but. So one of my strengths too that I have is is loyal. And so I think maybe I've come along with you for this because you already lost all of those people that are important and I don't mm -hmm. feel like you can afford to like lose anybody else. So I have to stick with you. Oh, I like you. that. Mm -hmm. I like, like that. I feel I, like I, I have to be there for you. Yeah. Oh, that's a really good, that's a really good dynamic. I like that. Cool. Awesome. I love all when right. it works out. <laughs> Absolutely. It's my it's my character's working out dance. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, listeners, you don't get to see it. Nope. <laughs> all right. Who's ready for the first question? Uh, I think I think we're all ready. All right. Should well, we, does anybody have a D4? Should we roll a D4? I don't have one on my desk. I've oh, got it. Okay, let's do it. Briggs ready. Amelia, that's you. All right. I knew it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I'd like to go first. <laughs> As an Amelia Antrim, I have been going first my whole life. <laughs> do you have a D20? I do not. I'm going to roll for you. Okay. All I right. put them away. I cleaned up. Uh, your first question is about Gar. All right. Positive question. You and this character once cut class together. Why? Oh. oh. Um, why would you cut class with Yeah, Gar? why would I do anything with Gar? <laughs> um... Let me look at my. I think I was concerned that Gar was going to do something like stupid. Um, I think maybe this is like the height of some of these legal proceedings. And I think Gar is like, I'm going to go see what's going on. And I'm going to figure this out. And I'm going to solve it myself. Um, mm. And I was like, I would not do that, maybe. And so, like, I think I followed along, like, you need someone there to. <laughs> At least make sure that this doesn't go bad. <laughs> Just for for everyone's sake, like I would feel guilty if something happened. Mm -hmm. All right, and then a negative question: What bad rumor have you heard about Gar that you don't think could possibly be true? Ooh, I think I heard that his family was actually trying to throw the case. Mm. Mm. And I'm just like, no, have you met him? He likes to win too much. Like, there's no way, <laughs> like, there's no way that could possibly be true. <laughs> he would never admit to being wrong. So I can't imagine no. his parents <laughs> would admit to being wrong. It just doesn't yeah, make seriously. sense. <laughs> Got to get that from somewhere. All right. Now, Gar, your turn to answer about Amelia. Or sorry, about Amy Catherine. When did you realize you loved this character, either romantically or platonically? <laughs> wow. <laughs> The stakes okay. just got raised. Uh, <laughs> yes, please. Uh, it's the first time someone's loved Amy Catherine more than her best friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people don't usually care about what happens to Gar. Um, and so I think when Amy Catherine was like willing to cut class being as reliable as she usually is, mm -hmm. um, Gar misinterpreted that. Oh. <laughs> um, or, or Gar. <laughs> and so I'm going to, I think I'm going to say that that class cutting happened just a couple weeks ago. Okay. Love Amazing. it. All right. And now a negative question about Amy Catherine. Seven. What ambition does this character have that scares you? Uh, I think that that desire to lift the curse is... The curse is strong, and so, you know, we know enough that about magic to know that to break something strong, you have to do something big. Mm -hmm. um, and I think Gar is worried that she would 
go too far with it. Yeah. That's not all in line with the characters that I make. What are you talking about? <laughs> I would never <laughs> go too far. What? I love it. All right. Mm-hmm. Jimmy and Elvira, which one of you would like to answer about the other one first? I, I, I can go first. Okay. okay. Elvira, what wonderful, unforgettable experience did you and Jimmy have together? Jimmy is the, uh, the, the funny klutz, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Gosh, I want to... I want to say that um, I I was battling uh, my my literal demons, I guess, um, <laughs> when uh, Jimmy was around, and uh, Jimmy just kept uh, like stumbling into the right places, pushing me out of the way in just the right way, and yes. like like there was there was this like. I'm trying to do stuff and then Jimmy, uh, you know, accidentally gets in. So it looks like we're, we're kind of like clutching into one another. Um, and it somehow worked out. Oh. So I, we just had a big laugh about it afterwards. And, and I don't think Jimmy knew like the life and death stakes that were happening during that. Mm-hmm. It just looked like a bunch of happenstance of stumbling and tumbling. Okay. It's pretty on brand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do both of you hate about this school? Oh, I'm going to say, um, it, hmm, I'm going to say maybe like, um, not as much, uh, accessibility as, as there should be. Mm. Like that was put on the back burner to, uh, kind of clean up all this litigation. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right. Jimmy. Yes. You and Elvira have somewhere secret in the school that you go to that you think only the two of you know about. Where is it? Uh, I discovered a, uh, actually, I leaned against a wall one day and pushed this um, panel, and it's a secret um, entrance to like this little tiny library with uh, like forbidden magic books, but I'm too worried of touching, uh, about touching any of them. <laughs> <laughs> And then, when was the last time you betrayed this character? Ooh. Oh. Dang. Also, like, these questions don't fit at all. Like, if you're like, no, my character would just never betray anyone, you can just ask for a reroll. Mm-hmm. Cool. Or just choose a different one. I, um, I misplaced a note that um, Elvira had written to it was it definitely wasn't a purposeful betrayal but um i think if i can't find the note right now but it had some highly personal information that elvira was telling me and if it gets into the wrong hands i think elvira will oh. feel like it's a big personal betrayal yeah what hands would those be <laughs> mm, probably the uh one of the school bullies mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ooh, yeah you know how they feel about kids having emotions and feelings mm-hmm. They're for it. Uh, yes. <laughs> Big fans. For it so they can make fun of it. Oh. All right. Elvira. Uh, yeah. You and Amy Catherine. All right. Wonderful. Yes, please. All right. Uh, so Amy Catherine. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this would be a repeated question. This would be the two of you having some more secret in the school. Do you want a new one or do you want to do that? Like, um, Let's do a new one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is also a repeat. When did you realize you love this character, either romantically or platonically? But you can get a new one if you want, or you can go with that. Uh, and sorry, I'm not doing the voice. Love triangle. Um, did we say who was answering this one? Uh, uh, Amy Catherine. Amy Catherine is answering the battle. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm fine answering that one. Um, I am going to say it's when I decided to follow you to this school because we we knew each other before that. Right, because mm-hmm. your your magical girl friendship group thing was before going to the school, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna say I think I realized it when I made the decision to like come here and you know leave everything else to go on like an island in the middle of Lake Erie. Seems like yep. the kind of thing that you you know. <laughs> okay, and then what's the last thing you stole from this character? Ooh, ooh, oh. Uh... I mean, I think it would be something that, like, I took for your own good. You know, like, I don't think it was, like, a malicious mm-hmm. thing. Um, 
My heart. Gosh. Mm. <laughs> um, <laughs> no. Uh, I don't know. Let's say like a book or something that you were using like to do to do some research on stuff that I was like, I don't really like where this is going. Um, mm. You were like starting to become like a little bit obsessed with it and like. Yeah. Like getting a bit too deep yeah. into something when when. It's you like know, clearly it, not the way to go. Yeah. Maybe maybe it would have steered me down an even darker path. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What a shame if you got that sus back. <laughs> <laughs> bum, bum, bum. All right, Elvira, you and uh, Amy Catherine share a common interest in something weird and non-magical. What is it? Mm. Oh, that's a good question. Um, gosh, what would be something uh, weird and non-magical? Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu cards. Yes. 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 Correct. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Playing play to the audience. All right. And Elvira, how far along are you in your plan to get Amy Catherine removed from the school? <gasps> boy. Ooh. Wow. Whoa. Oh, boy. Didn't see that one coming. Tension. No. Part, part of me wants to roll with it. Part of me wants to re-roll re re with it. it. Yeah, yeah re-roll with it. <laughs> right. Because um, it would have to be for a good reason, right? Right. Um, it'd I mean, be for, for your own protection or, or something. I wonder I wonder if it, it's like a, a thought that I have been putting together uh, as like a fail-safe to... Uh, you know, keep you safe in case, you know, the worst came to worse or whatever. Are you worried that what happened to your other group will happen again? Yeah, exactly. So, like, if I if I see, like, the same sort of stuff starting to, you know, culminate into uh, this area of the world, um, I might might have to enact uh, a, the plan to to do so. So it's it's more of a thought exercise and, and like, taking brain notes of... Mm -hmm. uh you know what what steps i would need to do to to do that yeah so it's not that far along but like yeah it's not not there so i'm not like actively out to get you expelled but um to get you out of the school yeah uh just in case everything you know hits the fan whoa that's intense mm. thank you we were all waiting got, for it got to keep my bff safe mhm mm all right, Jimmy, you and Gar. All right. Positive. You saw this character do something nice for someone without making it about them. What was it? Sounds unlikely. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's why it stuck out. Uh-huh. Boy, it really surprised me uh, when I saw Gar help a murder person. What? Yeah. Um, you can't prove that. Can't prove it, but I, I, <laughs> I know I saw it. What do you think you saw me helping them do? What do you think you saw? <laughs> uh, they were uh, accidentally beached and couldn't get back into the water. Uh, and you, you picked them up and carried them. Oh, I mean, it's that, you know, like, she was, uh, yeah, it was just that she was hot. That's why I did it. That's it. <laughs> Showing off to the ladies. That's how they go. Uh, and uh, what forbidden spell do you know that Gar has been researching? What's, what's Gar's favorite class? Gar's favorite class is um, how awful should I make him? No, not that awful. Um, <laughs> Gar's favorite class is uh is potions gar has realized that he's not smart enough to follow in his family's legal footsteps mm -hmm. um and so he hopes to get into potion manufacturing uh so i think that jar has been trying to learn how to make a love potion and that is mm. forbidden 
uh, because it revokes oh, consent. Yeah. Yep. Did Jimmy just stumble into making that one day? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That's Jimmy just stumbles into everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, oh, Jimmy, those are the wrong ingredients. <laughs> uh, I don't know. So this would be a point where I, as a character, would uh, would say that, like, or as a player, would say, when we play this, that potion can never get finished, right? Right. I'm, sure. I'm good with that being something that my character is trying to do, but I'm not good mm. with the GM ever letting me do it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You're searching for the final ingredient. Right. Right. And uh, every time you try a different one, it leads to a bad result. Mm-hmm. For you. Right. Exclusively for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But increasingly wacky, I hope. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think increasingly wacky is a, it goes without saying. Yep. <laughs> the real this love potion. This is all a serious very game. serious. The real love potion was the friends we made along the way. Yeah, yep. For sure. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Gar. Jimmy once protected you from something dangerous. What happened? I think maybe that's when he found out that I was working on the love potion. Um, that there was a disastrous side effect that he managed to prevent from happening to me uh, or managed to reverse before there was any permanent damage. Oh, um, nice. Let's say, uh, I mean, let's say I caught on fire. <laughs> um, and he was there to put me out before I got any scarring, which, you know, would be real bad for me. For sure. I would want that. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then negative. All right, Gar, what secret do you need to keep from Jimmy to protect yourself? A secret doesn't, Gar. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, that's true. Yeah, so like part of me is tempted to say he needs to keep it secret that he's working on a love potion, but with meta knowledge, I know that that's not the case. So I'll, I'll dig deeper. Um, well, maybe maybe uh, Gar is trying to, but doesn't know that I know. I don't know if that's interesting though. So yeah, I, yeah, I think I want to go deeper. Um, I think he hasn't. That Gar has come closest to figuring out that he wants to make potion. That like as a profession, he wants to be a potion maker. Um, and he's still not, not good with people knowing that he wants to do that because he feels like it's a a failure on his part, not living up Mm. to his family's expectations. Yeah. So, yeah. I like that. Cool. All right. Uh, Jimmy and Amy Catherine, who'd like to answer first? I can. Great. What magic event did the two of you experience that no one else believes happened? Um... I really want it to be like something like stupid and small so that people would be like, why would you even make that? You know, mm-hmm. like, um, can it just be that like we found the sock room and like we can't find it again? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and and everybody's like, why would you lie about that? Like, we all know that the sock room is fake. It's not a real thing. And we're like, no, we really saw it. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. All right. And then. What magical object does Jimmy have that you want to take from him? Ooh, what is a cool thing that something can do? That's magic, so anything? I know. <laughs> I'm just trying to think, like, what would I want a thing to do? You know, what, uh-huh. would, what would Amy Catherine like? I have something to do with uh, lifting the curse. Yeah. We haven't, really, we haven't really, like, determined what that curse is, though. No. At all. Um. But it's bad enough to disappear an entire team of magical right, girls. Right. It's got to have something to do with these invisible things that I'm fighting constantly. Are you the only other person that can see these? Maybe. Do you want somebody else to be able to see them? Or do you want our curses to be like close, but not quite? I, I would love it if we had a shared, like, we, sure. we're the only two people in the world that we know of that can see these things. Yeah. Um, I think he has some kind of like... I want it to be an orb. I don't know why. I just want it to be an orb um, that sort of acts as like a a protection. Um, you know, he's somebody that's incredibly clumsy, but somehow still manages to be lucky enough to like not be horribly injured all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that he doesn't fully appreciate like the power of this thing. And I'm like, you're chased by these evil spirit demon things that are constantly trying to hurt you and like (laughs) he's just really clumsy 
one of you needs this more. <laughs> like <laughs> well, That works really well, because I, I wrote down a bunch of horrible things in my bag, and one of them is a Fushigi ball, like the, the ball that the Goblin Chain uses in the uh, in Labyrinth. Mm. Mm. Cool. So that's the that's the orb. I just don't know that's that. I just right. try to do tricks with it and drop it all the time. <laughs> right. And every time like, I drop it, God. you're like, hey. Would you just let me hold that for you? <laughs> okay. I'll keep it safe. Please. Don't worry. Oh. I love it. Mm-hmm. All right. Jimmy. Yes. <laughs> Why did you spend the summer at Amy Catherine's home instead of your own? Because <gasps> uh, I burnt my home down by accident. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. oh no! I love it. I love it. I feel like Amy Catherine being herself is like, you know what? You don't have anywhere to go. I can't just like, why don't you come stay with me? Mm-hmm. My mom will make us peanut butter sandwiches. It'll be fine. It's fine. And then, Jimmy, you hurt Amy Catherine years ago. Why can't you apologize? Uh, I can't apologize because Amy Catherine doesn't know it was me. Oh. Mm-hmm. Um, what did you do? Did I? That's a good question. That's a whole other question, and we were only answering one question. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> um, I am the reason that the curse is on her. Oh, <gasps> what? Yeah, I accidentally did it. Uh, I was I was trying to just cast a normal practice spell, and oh no, I accidentally said a curse instead. It was like one word off. It's they really shouldn't do that. Uh, <laughs> they should be more careful in their spell creation. I, I was halfway through the spell and I spilled my soda on the scroll. Right. It was just really hard to tell if it was like yeah, an eye or an blurred. E. Yeah, I was pretty sure. I, I was confident I knew what word it was. But uh, I, mean, this, I am I am getting some major army of darkness vibes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, J- Jimmy's teenage ash. Uh huh. <laughs> I mean, if the people who wrote the uh, the scroll did a good job, like it would have been yeah. soundproof. That's on them. Yeah, that's Can't true. You paid twenty five dollars for that scroll. <laughs> it's called lamination. Mm-hmm. God, it's not even magic. <laughs> it sometimes it is. I do love true. to laminate things. Oh, it's so great, isn't it? All right, Elvira. Yeah. How did Gar stop a bad rumor about you from spreading? Oh boy. Oh, that's interesting. Is, is Gar a, a, a person that people, like, listen to on the regular? Yes. Like, he's, he's got some, like, influence because of his standing and whatnot. His standing, his family. He is, like, more charming than average. Okay. So, so maybe, um, maybe Gar just spoke up uh, for Elvira. Um, like this rumor was starting to get circulated just like he was one of the first people that the rumor was starting to get circulated to, um, because, you know, uh, we're seen together a lot because of, um, this group that we're uh, somehow in. And, um, and I think, I think he just, uh, just said, no, that's not, that's not the case. That would, that would, you know. I know Elvira more than that. Uh, while making and, eye contact with Amy Catherine to make sure that she knew that he was stopping oh, this rumor. Yep. <laughs> For sure. Oh, this is the worst. A lot of repeats here. Why won't you be alone in a classroom with Gar? Because <laughs> he's Gar? Um, <laughs> Does, I, mean, I mean, it's his, his reputation, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. Gar, how did this character cover for you when you made a big mistake? Um, I think the day after the rumor thing, um, I was almost caught cheating on a test. Um, and Elvira saw that the teacher saw um, and created some sort of like magical distraction to take the teacher's mind off of it to like just at, at the last second before uh, but made it big enough that they that it sort of like pushed it out of their mind mm-hmm. um yeah well it, yeah if it's like a test situation what if it was like near the end of the test and like um i, I want to say like the faculty 
kind of knows mm -hmm. a little bit about the curse, but not to the extent. But they know, like, there's situations where um, I might have to run out of the the room to uh, take care of business. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and, and so, like, I use that as an excuse, even though there wasn't a threat. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, I just finished my test a, a bit earlier than everybody else. Mm -hmm. uh, slammed the test down on the on the desk and and said sorry I got a you know thing and ran out of the room right and that was like just enough to to draw attention away and I think I've made it clear that if a teacher doesn't catch me literally in the act of cheating like with irrefutable evidence I'll just be like yeah you can't prove it yep <laughs> regardless if you were cheating or not right I will call my father. <laughs> my father will hear about this. Yeah. It will be like many conversations that I have had with the teacher. Uh huh. How do you know that those five sentences came from this website? You can't prove that. <laughs> I, I don't need to. Uh, all right. Um, Gar, what part of Elvira's personality scares you? <laughs> I'm sure there's a, there's a decent amount. Yeah. I think beyond the like beyond the curse and all that sort of stuff. I think she, she's just like an unbelievably intense person. Mm. Mm -hmm. And as we've sort of been like, our group has been pushed together more and more. I think he's had a few moments where Elvira made it clear that like, if need be, she would just go through him. Yeah. Uh, and He's, Especially if I'm picking up on those uh, those vibes towards Amy Catherine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. That is character creation. Well, that wow. is. Um, so we th that it. is. Those are relationship questions. Um, yeah. And now we do the finishing touches. So finishing touches oh. are uh, your wand, your broom, that sort of stuff. Oh, excellent. So the way uh, wands work is you select uh, wood and a core, mm -hmm. although you're casting thing can be you know really anything it doesn't have to be a wooden wand with some kind of core it could be a gem with something encased in it of some sort it could be mm. uh, an amulet with something in it uh but basically you have a, a two-part wand that gives you a bonus to one of your uh, one of your stats when you're casting magic for the, the wood and a different stat when you're casting magic with the core okay um so, like, if you have a an oak wand with a uh, dragon's heartstring core, you would get a bonus to brawn and bite, but only when you're using magic. Okay. Okay. So, uh, r my character's best uh, attribute is fight. Mm -hmm. Um. So it feels like if I, I would want to choose something maybe aside from fight for the wood and the the core. Um, because I'm already good at fight. So it boosting other stats sounds more advantageous potentially. Totally up to you. So the wand is is really gonna be like a reflection of how you either how you want to present to the world or like the your sort of like true self. Um, mm. so it could be that, you know, they, they boost your two highest stats. It could be that, you know, one of your or it could not, right? It's yeah. yeah. Oh, that's interesting. All right, I think I've got mine then. Okay. What's Elvira's wand? I'm going to be going with a uh, a cherry wood, mm -hmm. uh, which gives me a bonus to charm, uh, which is my weakest stat, mm -hmm. and uh, a dragon's heartstring core, uh, which gives me a bonus to fight, which is my strongest mm. stat. Okay. I also picked cherry, Ooh. even Ooh. though Ooh. charm is my best stat. Uh, and then nice. I picked Phoenix, Phoenix Feather, um, which gives me a bonus to brains, which is how I want to see myself, even mm. though my brains are, like, pretty average. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, I chose Lilac um, based on charm, and then the core is a uh, bat's bone, so it helps me in flight, which I'm mm -hmm. bad at. Oh, nice. So I went with a Hawthorne wand, uh, which gives me a bonus to brains, which is something that he wishes he had more of, um, and a gold core, which is charm, which is something he also wishes he had. Nice. Um, and then the last one is uh, 
the brew. So on page 25 of the book, uh, I'm not sure what that is in the, the PDF, but uh, there's a list of possible brews you can have. This one very much is what you want yourself to be, right? You're buying something to make you more this when you're on the broom. It only mm. is an effect when you're riding. Like Gar is going with uh, the Daredevil's Duster, which gives him, uh, uh, anytime he performs a stunt, I get plus three to charm checks against any characters who witness the stunt. And I'm taking the Tough Break, uh, which gives me plus one to grit checks because I get hurt a lot. Mm. I think I'm going to go with the uh, Cunning Captain's Cruiser. Uh, which uh, the short description of the writer is a natural leader. Mm -hmm. uh, you may treat snap decisions as planned actions unless you are facing a fear. That was the one I picked too. Oh, oh, Ooh. that's that's so Ooh. cool. I, I'm not, I like but that. I want to be. Yeah, I I think I picked mine because like I'm the I'm the last of my group, so I mm -hmm. I have to be the leader, right? Or maybe I was the leader of the group. Um, and which puts an even bigger burden uh, on my tragedy. Oh, yeah. Cool. And then, uh, so uh, so the next last two things are fear and motivation. So what fear does is when you're facing a fear, there are some bad things that are going to happen to your character in terms of stat checks. Um, you won't be able to take planned actions, which is when you take half the value of your die instead of rolling, uh, if you're able to plan a little bit. Uh, because of your, you know, sort of panic response, um, you're not able to help other characters using adversity tokens, and uh, you're going to have up to a minus three penalty to your check, depending on how severe your fear is. Mm. And so this can be something really, you know, concrete and specific, like fear of water or, you know, spiders, um, or it can be something more conceptual, like fear of harm befalling one of their friends or fear of disappointing their parents or what have you. Yeah. I think mine is fear of always being a sidekick. Mm. Mm. I've got, I've got a fear of losing Amy Catherine. Um, I think mine's a fear of attention, both positive and negative. Mm. Oh. Mm. Uh, my character's fear is disfigurement. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh. <laughs> of course it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then motivation is more uh, this is purely role playing this is you know what motivates your character what makes them tick what are they trying to do like uh, Gar's motivation is to prove himself to his parents does it break the curse mm -hmm. uh, my motivation is I need to break this curse to save the world um, mine is just getting people to like me um, because I tend to get teased a lot uh, and then if you haven't already, give your character a last name. And so the reason we hold this off is in case, like, in the process of, you know, generating characters, you're like, oh, we're actually going to be twins or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. I think I'll stick with Whisper Shanks. Okay. Whisper Shanks is good. Yep. It's good. Uh, and I am Garrison or Gar, Wilbur Thrum the fourth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Of course. Of course. Yeah, mine was just Boyd. Still going to be Boyd because all my initials are ABC. <laughs> Actually, they're not. They're ACB. ACB. Which is just like, slightly annoying. Uh, and mine is Tingle Bottom. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. And we're ready to play. Oh, that's amazing. Well, I guess that's where we stop. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's it. <laughs> oh, this was a lot of fun. This was so much fun and very serious. <laughs> very. Oh, yeah. Serious very all around. Serious. No goofiness at all. No goofiness None. at all. Not not even a little bit. Yeah. I mean, there's some stuff in here, though, that is, like, mm -hmm. pretty serious, yeah. you know. Um, That's true. Which is where, you know, where we usually end up is that it averages out because we can't help ourselves but, like, complicate things. Mm -hmm. and, you know, we, we like to make it messy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so as, like, for GMing, this is where I would start to think about, like, what are... I really like using the rumors for story hooks, right? Mm -hmm. um, and thinking about places where there might be some interaction between those rumors, especially in like unexpected ways. Um, mm. So the, you know, the rumor that Meredith Bleep Borp's consciousness has been replaced with an impersonator um, kind of seems like low hanging fruit. 
Mm-hmm. But yeah, and we haven't done a lot with that already. You know, like the other ones, we've kind of right touched on well, a little bit, but we kind of forgot about that one. We but we have this whole potion storyline right. with Gar, mm-hmm. and, and so that links together pretty nicely. That's true, and he right. has to go work for the Blorb Corporation. And right, and oh. so with the cheating from last year, possibly with her consent, I think maybe I would lean into her sort of being told, like, you know, you just barely got away with that. You need to... And so she's not different, but there's pressure from outside about that. Possibly, mm-hmm. possibly sinister pressure. Um, yeah. And then, you know, the legal stuff going on with the the merfolk would definitely yeah. uh, be ongoing. Um, but really, I would be having some ideas for where I think it would go and then letting players blow that up with 12 tons of dynamite as we go. Yeah. As they do. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, both of you, for joining us for our Kids on Brooms character creation. This was so much fun. I had such mm-hmm. a good time. <laughs> I love what we made. It's so good. I know. Now I want to play it. Yeah. I know. Yes, yep. <laughs> Welcome to the eternal problem of this podcast. <laughs> uh huh. Do you both want to remind everybody where they can find you and what you are up to? Yeah, yeah, you can find me on Twitter at John Gilmore, J-O-N-G-I-L-M-O-U-R. And I got lots of stuff going on. The best place is just follow me on Twitter and I'll post it. There you go. Cool. Uh, yeah, I'm Doug Levandowski on Twitter, uh, L-E-V-A-N-D-O-W-S-K-I. Um, and yeah, the, the big stuff is Kids and Capes, the secret project Uh that John and I are working on, hopefully that other secret project that John and I are working on that isn't a, a kids on thing. Um, and then uh, home as well, which um, I'll be talking quite a lot more about soon, which I think is as much as I can say about that now, but uh, there you go. yeah, and I will definitely be talking about that on Twitter. So people can find me there. Awesome. Very cool. Well, thank you again. And thank you to everybody for listening. Please join us on the next episode for our discussion block. Call to action. Yeah, like that. Uh, This was probably our most serious character creation session ever. I mean, we've done some like, you know, really heavy game, but like, I don't think we've ever been this serious yeah i don't know how greg got into the studio with us but but greg just took over and and was like all right we're doing this serious and we're like you know what you've got a good air about you we're doing this serious yeah like i like your vibe greg yeah might as well sure why not i don't know who you are but sure greg masterson thank you uh you know yeah if you're friends of of anybody uh you know good on you for finding a way into our studio definitely (laughs) Uh, also, this game was awesome. Um, I, the relationship stuff. I didn't know what to expect because I yeah, yeah. I hadn't done. I'd listened to some actual plays of kids on bikes. Yeah. Um, but I just didn't really know what to expect, especially with magic school stuff. I'm always mm-hmm. like, mm, is it going to be good or is it going to be like a little too cute? And like, I don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Um, but I really enjoyed this. I thought this was, was a lot so of fun. Good. Those relationship questions really brought it home. Oh, they were fantastic. Yeah, I, I, I was saying you could, you could basically take relationship questions from any of these three games in the series and, and another one, the Kids and Capes coming out sometime, who knows when. Yeah. Um, and you can just take those and port those over to uh, pretty much any other game that you're playing. And because they're they're generic enough that you can probably tweak them a little bit. Uh, but like po- positive and negative responses for everybody. Yeah. Is, that's such a good web of like relationship leading questions that that. Oh, so good. It was it was great. It was mm-hmm. great. It really added a lot of like depth and dimension. Yeah. To, to what we were doing. I'm very excited. Well, before we let you go for the week, uh, we have a couple calls to action or, as I mentioned earlier, more announcements if you like them. (laughs) Exactly. Uh, First up, if you want to help out this show and others on the network, consider the One Shot Network Patreon at patreon.com slash one shot podcast. Also, check out our brand new TikTok page at character creation cast on TikTok. Uh, I'm going to be keeping on posting those teasers there, but like... Uh, what else would you like to see? 
Uh, what? Maybe. Yeah, what, what? What do with TikTok, y'all? Yeah, maybe. How maybe TikTok? We'll do, I, I keep saying maybe we'll do something else. Uh, but having ideas are nice. So uh, hit us up on Twitter at CreationCast or on Discord at discord.charactercreationcast.com. We would be very happy to hear from you. And despite what I might have implied earlier in the episode, there are no bad ideas in brainstorming. Absolutely. So we'd love to hear. Mm-hmm. Next, we ask that you absolutely check out the Trans Rights Texas and Ukraine bundles on Itch. Both of these are such a good deal mm-hmm. um, and really help both kids that will be suffering down in Texas um, after some really damaging anti-trans policy that's happening there, um, as well as the folks over in Ukraine um, who are just being absolutely devastated right now. Mm -hmm. Um, So please check them out. Consider giving more than the minimum amount if you are able to, um, because it goes to a great cause and it is a boatload of games. Mm -hmm. So many. So many games. Um, Games for days. For days. Like literal days, because there are like 1,500 games, like literal days. Yeah. Like probably over a year's worth of gameplay there. Games for years. (laughs) Games for years. (laughs) Uh, And if you have some time after all of that, consider leaving a rating and review for our podcast. Um, Sadly, I found out the other day that Stitcher no longer does podcast reviews. I saw them reply to you on Twitter and they were just like, yep. Yep. And then like a sad face. And I was like, why are you sad? You did this. You did it to yourself. I know. Well, it's probably some higher ups decided to do it. Oh, I'm sure. And now the and social media person is having to deal with that for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but it was just like a weird. <laughs> it was like, very surreal. Why are you sad? It was very surreal. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, it is really weird. Uh, so now really we're left with Apple Podcasts, which is pretty easy if you're in the iOS sphere. And uh, if you've updated iTunes recently. And if, <laughs> Yeah. Even then, it's not that easy. <laughs> no, Let's not. be honest. I just even got then. an iPhone, though, um, after years of Android. So maybe I oh. can leave some podcast reviews. That was entirely why I got an iPhone. I was like, <laughs> iPhone, podcast Android, reviews. podcast reviews. There you go. Yeah. Uh, so we have Apple Podcasts, but we also have Podchaser, um, which is accessible on pretty much any device with web browser, which is nice. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you're an Android user, another great place to leave a review is on podcast addict we have one one to read right is this it Mm -hmm. is this it so like leave a review come on what are you doing uh this is from dark the dark fiddler on podcast addict and they said long time listener frequent reviewer character creation cast is one of the best examples of what non-actual play ttrpg podcasts can be part teaching you to play part discussion part purely fun times It's hard not to get something out of a series. Pick up an episode about a game you already know to see it in a new light, or pick something new to you to find a new game or creator to follow. Highly recommend 11 out of 10. 11 out of 10. 11 out of 10. They're good podcasts, Ryan. (laughs) Well, thank you for the review, The Dark Fiddler. Um, and, And I would say your review is 11 out of 10. Absolutely. Like, I dare say 12 out of 10. 12 out of 10. Yeah. Very bold. Yes. 12 out of 10. Great <laughs> review. Would read again, except won't because you get you get the one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, unless we forget and, and accidentally do it again sometime. Yeah. Which has happened. We've, yeah. we've we double just, read like, start a review. again from the top. <laughs> yeah, might as well. Well, that's it for today's episode. Come back again next week as we dive into a fantastic discussion. Uh, this game was so good and... Um, goodness, we've got some stuff to say in the uh, fanfic section. So, and I just always love our episodes with designers when we get to really pick their brain about why they did. Like, they're just my favorite. They're just absolutely, my favorite. They're absolutely, absolutely, it's so good. Um, until then, take care of yourselves, everyone. Uh, drink some water, get some rest, get vaccinated, stay safe out there, and keep making those amazing people. We'll see you next time.
Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Now we gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you'll find other great shows like Asians Represent. Asians Represent celebrates Asian creators and diversity in the gaming community. Join hosts Agatha Chain and Daniel Kwan as they discuss gaming, genre, and representation with their guests and occasionally argue with each other to the sound of Agatha's beloved Airhorn app.